Hello everyone, it's Gisa from Butterfly Garden. My magic door is open. Let's see who's behind there. Do you guys know who this is? This is a praying mantis. Hi. Are you gonna help tell our story today? Okay. The story for today is called Manuelo, the Playing Mantis, written by Don Freeman. One warm summer evening in Cloverdale Meadow, a lonely praying mantis named Manuelo stood still as a stick, listening to beautiful music coming over the hill. Manuelo had attended these outdoor concerts many times before, and he knew the shapes and sounds of all the different instruments. His favorite sounds were those of the flute, the trumpet, the harp, and the cello. Manuelo wished that he too could be a musician. When the concert was over, he climbed down from his perch in the thicket and went home to the pond. Hopefully, Manuelo started rubbing his legs against his wings, the way crickets and grasshoppers and katydids do whenever they sing. But as hard as he rubbed, he heard only silence and the clicking of a cricket coming nearer and nearer. Clickety-click, it chirped. A mantis can't make music the way I can. And then, just as quickly as it had appeared, it disappeared behind the tall grass. There must be something I can do, Manuelo sighed to himself. Then, all at once, he thought of an idea. I know, he said, I'll make a flute. At the water's edge, Manuelo found exactly what he needed, a hollow cattail. In the middle of the pond, a frog sat, practicing his singing. He stopped his croaking and watched as Manuelo clipped off one of the tall reeds and nipped several tiny holes along its stem. But when Manuelo held up his flute and began to blow, not a sound came through, not even a toot. Grumph, croaked the frog. We frogs know how to croak. Now that is music. A mantis can't make music the way frogs can. And with that, he jumped into the water. However, Manuelo hadn't even noticed the frog. His mind was on more important matters, and he set out to find another kind of instrument to play. Close by, he spied a trumpet vine clinging to a wall. Just the thing, he cried. I'll play a horn. After snipping off a trumpet flower, he held it up the way any fine trumpet player does and began to blow. He blew and blew and blew until he grew blue in the face. Once again, not a single sound could he make. But Manuelo was not going to give up easily. On he went, undaunted. He scanned the ground for something out of which he could fashion a harp. Ah, at last, just what I want, he said, picking up a twisty twig that had fallen off a fig tree. Soon, he had bent and fastened the twig into a perfect heart shape. For strings, he found some strands of an old cobweb that had stretched across the lowest branch of the fig tree. Now he was ready to sit down and play his harp. But when he began to stroke the delicate strands, they broke off one by one, all because of his snippy claws. No, indeed, the harp was not meant to be his instrument. Poor Manuelo sat there feeling sad. He loved music so much and yet he could not make any. At that very moment, three katydids came out into the clearing and began to chant, Katy did Katy, don't you know? A mantis can't make music the way we can. Manuelo was discouraged and almost ready to give up trying when he heard something whirring high above his head. Take heart, my good fellow, said a thin, wispy voice. I know how you feel. I can't make music either. Turning his head completely around, Manuelo looked up and saw a spindly spider suspended by a thread from a branch above. My name is Debbie Webster, and I've been watching you all evening, she said as she slid down lower and lower until she hung directly in front of Manuelo's face. 
if you will do as I tell you, maybe together we can make a cello. But first of all, you must promise not to eat me. Manuelo's eyes widened. He had forgotten all about the cello. Why, of course I promise not to eat you. And he meant it. This could be worth a thousand meals. All right then, advised the spider. First, you must fetch an empty walnut shell and a stick with a curly cue on the end. Without asking questions, Manuela went about searching everywhere. In hardly any time at all, he found half a walnut shell and a stick with a curly cue on the end. Tucking them both under his arms, he rushed back to his spindly spider friend. Now, my good mantis, said Debbie, if you will fix the stick tightly to the shell, I will spin some strong strings for you. No sooner had Debbie whispered this than Manuelo attached the stick to the walnut shell. He watched as the nimble spider spun four strong silken threads from one end of the stick to the other. All we need now is a bow, said Debbie. Can you think of something that will do the trick? Yes, yes, I know, exclaimed Manuelo. I saw a bluebird's feather that should make a splendid bow. And indeed, it did. At last, Manuelo was ready to play his cello. Taking the bow in his right hand, he began moving it softly across the silken strings. And as he bowed back and forth, the most beautiful melody filled the night air. Debbie swayed to and fro, keeping perfect time to the music, like a pendulum. Gradually from the grassy glade, from behind the fig tree, and from out of the pond, crickets, grasshoppers, katydids, and frogs came creeping forward, making a wide circle around Manuela. As they listened, each creature could not resist joining in the cello's mellow music. Soon everyone was taking part in the concert with clicking, fiddling, wing singing, and deep-throated croaking. Never was there more a glorious insect symphony. On and on, far into the night, Manuelo played to everyone's delight. As the first glow of dawn lighted the morning sky, Manuelo rose slowly to his full height and stretched his arms out wide, a sight which served as a warning to the rest of the orchestra to take leave. Manuela waited for Debbie Webster to slide down inside the hollow nutshell. Then he slung the cello over his shoulder and strode across the meadow to his home in the thicket. And every summer night thereafter, Manuelo played his cello while Debbie swayed back and forth by his side. That's the end of our story. All right, are you ready to make your own little praying mantis mask? What you'll need is a paper plate. Um, it doesn't matter what color it is on the inside because you're gonna fold it and you're gonna paint both sides of it. I'm just gonna paint one side of it today, but you are gonna paint it, let it dry, or you can paint it um, open, paint the whole thing and then fold it, or paint one side, let it dry, and then paint the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and paint mine green because praying mantises are green. And you'll just need a paintbrush. I'm using a pretty thick paintbrush just because um, it will paint more surface area. But you can use a small one if that's all you have at home. Remember. We're all about using what you've already got. You can use acrylic paint. You can use watercolor paint. You can use tempera paint. You can use any paint you have at home. I'm using some finger paint. And as you can see, you can kind of see through the finger paint. So I may have to give it a couple coats. I'm going to let mine dry. While it's drying, I'm going to clean my paintbrush so the paint doesn't ruin the paintbrush by getting too stuck on there. The other things you'll need for this project 
are either a chopstick or a ruler or even a tongue depressor or popsicle stick because what we're going to do after it dries is we're going to glue or tape it down because you'll want to use this as a mask so you'll want to be able to hold it up to your face. You'll also need a chenille or um, pipe cleaner because we're going to need a little antennae for our praying mantis. So, uh, and either glue or tape um, so that we can tape the um, popsicle stick or, or chopstick and also um, adhere the antennae. Okay, while you're waiting, you can get the eyes ready. Now you can either paint the eyes on with some dark paint, like some black paint, or you can use stickers. I happen to have these little white stickers that I'm going to color in black and use those as my eyes. And I'm just using a Sharpie, but you can, you can use um, a black marker as well. And I'll go ahead and stick those on. And then I'm going to go ahead and tape, tape my chopstick on. All right, so we're almost finished. Now we're going to take the pipe cleaner or chenille. I'm going to cut it in half and add the antennas. And I'm going to go ahead and um, tape them. To the back. Okay, and there you have it. You can put this onto your face and turn into a little praying mantis. Thanks for joining us. Please remember to like and subscribe to support our channel. Thank you.